Welcome to Micro Histories. I'm your host, Jason Bischoff Orsel for the New Haven Museum. And today we're talking about Goatville. Goatville is a segment of East Rock. Specifically, everything on that side of Orange Street, heading all the way to the Mill River. All the way over to about I-91 these days. Why is it called Goatville? Great question. And as the story goes, in the late 1800s, as the neighborhood was developing, it was a, a populated uh, by Irish residents who liked to keep goats and kind of just let the goats roam about, not caring much for yards or laws in that sort of regard. And the goats roamed throughout the neighborhood and the fields. And the name was at first kind of a derogatory dig at the neighborhood, but its time has grown to be an affectionate demarcation of what this neighborhood is. So, why are we here today at Bishop and Orange? The boundaries of Goldville are generally thought to be about to Edward Street, but for our purposes today, we're coming one block over to the corner of Bishop and Orange. Why is that? Because behind me stood Abraham Bishop's farmhouse. Why is that important? Well, when Abraham Bishop passed away in 1846, his land went to his daughters and their husbands. This land was then subdivided to become Nash, Foster, Nickel, and Clark Streets, along with the other streets later subdivided off, essentially the heart of Goatville. As Abraham Bishop's farmhouse was located here on the corner of what is now Bishop Street and Orange Street, as of 1846, the entire area around here was indeed the countryside. Orange Street at that point was known as Orange Street and does date back into practically the settlement of the New Haven colony. It was originally known as Mill Lane, basically because this trail led all the way to the Mill River and the location of the original New Haven Mill but eventually became decrepit and just sort of fell apart, especially after the mill went out of uh, business. And it was until the development in the mid 19th century and especially the later 19th century, kind of the real, the boom of growth here in the countryside, of course, relating to trolleys and easier tra transportation that the neighborhood started to take on more of the form that we're familiar with today. Today, part of what gives Goatville a specific character are the patios located outside of uh, the variety of stores here along uh, Orange Street. Not to mention, you know, the, the idea of character, cafe style eating, etc., that is spread throughout the city. However, you, you'd think this is, you know, sort of a story as old as time. This is relatively new. This started right behind me at the side of the East Rock Coffee which was previously known as Luz, which began in the 1990s and ran through 2015 before it became East Rock Coffee. And Lulu's was very small inside, and so the idea was, let's extend out onto the patio. And at the time, in the 90s, this was discouraged for a couple reasons. One, the idea that a coffee shop anywhere besides downtown was taken away from business downtown during uh, an economic downturn in New Haven as a whole. And two, that sitting outside would attract possible shooters from drive-by shootings, being as at this point, New Haven was at the height of a crack cocaine epidemic. The patio seating succeeded and then spread up and down Orange Street, and now is clearly spread throughout New Haven as a whole. Mixing into the eclectic style here is the Armory Court behind me. This building is strangely unique because the facade here is actually the old Armory. This was built between 1906 and 1908, and housed horses, troops, and as armories generally do because of the name armory, arms, guns, cannons, etc. Here at the very end of Orange Street. 
in close proximity to the weapons factories nearby, just a few blocks over. The facade is all that remains of the armory after a fire burned the rest down. And in the 1980s, condominiums were developed, extending back into what makes this into, indeed, an armory court. Have you ever wondered when you're on I-91 why exit 6 is on the left-hand side? And you exit and you get off of the highway, which will also bring you to Goatville. The reason being is, in 1959, the Warbrook Cross High School opened here. It moved from its downtown location, where it was located where uh, Morrison Stiles College is. The new school was built here at the far end and basically the border of Goatville. Five years later, in 1964, it was proposed and the motions were beginning to build a highway connector. Approximately right there, cutting right in front of East Rock. That would have straightened the Mill River, pretty much covered the Mill River, and the highway connector would have gone from exit 6. So when you get off the highway and you have to make that turn, that was meant to just keep going straight and keep following a highway connector all the way to Whitney Avenue and heading up north that way. This was fought beginning in 1964 by a group, a neighborhood group here throughout East Rock, not just Goatville, and fought legally and successfully by the 1970s, the project was canceled. And it also set the, a legal precedent that highways could not be built on public lands because East Rock Park and portions of it considered public land. So that's helped to stall, not to mention the lack in funding as the 1970s wore on of uh, new highway projects. But could you imagine a highway in the sky right behind this, this school? As Goatville was, as I mentioned, a mixed-use neighborhood, industry did come here on the outskirts of, at that point, New Haven and East Rock as a whole. In 1870, John Marlin established Marlin Firearms. Marlin had previously gotten his experience in the firearms industry at Colt Manufacturing in Hartford. He began to manufacture weapons in the facility behind me here on Nickel Street and Willow. Marlin Firearms grew to be one of the world's largest weapons producers in World War I. And the, the, there was this high water mark. Around that time too, the specific facilities behind me, the Rock Bestos division, developed. Initially uh, kind of uh, wrapped with uh, insulators for wires and what have you. Kind of a more specialized division of Marlin that eventually split off into its own company. This company continued to operate in the location here after Marlin had left for North Haven. Rock Bestos operated here until 1992. Today, obviously, the building is thriving with, as a hub of activity. Goldfield has a history of involved residents and activism. It was in Goldfield that the first block watch began in the 1970s to combat the growing issues with crime throughout the city. And it was also here where things like the first uh, free public uh, mini libraries that you see throughout the city, here and elsewhere, began. Goatfield's residents have been a, a large mix and diverse mix of people that also tended to live here for some time. In the 1990s, the Yale Homebuyer Program began here in Goatville, or extended here rather, and that helped to introduce a new generation and generations after of homeowners and residents. When, when old-time residents and families began to age out and either move and or pass away and sell off their homes. Goatville as it developed as it was filled with everything that you need including entertainment. If you're working in the Marlin factory and you left 
and you need a cold drink, you could run around the corner to Archie Moore's, which has been a tavern consistently since 1898. Or you could hit up what was recently known as kind of New Haven's most well-kept secret, or better-kept secrets, Contoy's Tavern on Nickel Street. Or, if you wanted to come down and catch a sci-fi movie in the 1950s, in the 1960s, catch all the, the latest B-movies, behind me was the Lawrence Theater, which was originally in operation as a small vaudeville theater in, in the early days of motion pictures as well, in the 19-teens. And the theater was clearly woven into the fabric of the neighborhood. And from all around, not just Goatville, but over in Worcester Square, Jocelyn Square, kids would come by and watch five cent movies on Saturday afternoons. As we know through this episode, Goatville is named for the roaming goats that pass through the neighborhood. Blake Field behind me was filled with these goats at one point. Blake Field also, throughout its history, was home to a different series of animals. Well, a temporary home, that is. The Ringling Brothers Circus, when it was in town in New Haven, used to set up camp right behind me on Blake Field. The elephants, the giraffes, the lions would all be parked here. And neighbors on Mechanic Street were quoted to say that Blake Field smelled like the circus for weeks after. Good old P.T. Barnum. State Street typically marks the eastern end of Goatville. State Street has gone through many different iterations and is also a path, a road that's nearly as old as the settlement of New Haven. As I had mentioned in a previous episode with the Neck Bridge, which is just around the corner, this road goes all the way to Middletown to this very day. And at one point, was really, and even till t today, the sort of main street of New Haven. At the high point of the settling of Goatville, again, you could find anything you needed here on State Street. And State Street was also where Worcester Square would meet, Jocelyn Square would come, Wallace Street, for instance, ran all the way through to just this point on State Street. So things were much more intertwined and the neighborhoods were much more connected with the residents. The highway clearly cut off this neighborhood as it also separated from Cedar Hill behind us. Separated this neighborhood from Fairhaven and lifted the traffic, the thorough traffic, which would be trucks, uh, etc., away from the direct path of State Street in the 1950s into the 1960s. So by the 1970s, this area was really just known as a sort of fringe neighborhood. It had fallen on to hard times, but was still operational and still filled with entrepreneurial residents. It was when groups like the Upper State Street Neighborhood Association came together in 1977 to help boost activity, positivity, fix buildings up, bring more apartments in, and begin the transformation into what State Street, and specifically this line here, is today as the far edge of Goatville. And every neighborhood needs a fire station. And that's what this was behind me. This building was built as firehouse number 19, finished in about 1874, just 12 years after the New Haven Fire Department was officially incorporated in 1862. It remained in operation until 1962, when it was then closed for the, and, and the company moved to the current firehouse located on Whitney Avenue for the neighborhood as it is. In 1974, the building was renovated and has since gone through different iterations as galleries, offices, and restaurants. And 
of special note, because we love digging below the surface here on Micro Histories, this sculpture here, this piece of public art, is to my knowledge, the only piece of the World Trade Center that is at least on public view here in New Haven. It's here on this corner. It's part of a sculpture honoring those who lost their lives on September 11th, 2001. That's it for Goatfill, but if you have any comments, additions, etc., please let us know in the comments. Be sure to hit that subscribe button below to our New Haven Museum channel. And for the New Haven Museum, I'm your host, Jason Bischoff Forstel. Thanks so much. Stay tuned. There'll be more micro histories coming soon. <laughs>